episode two of Nanny Knits, a podcast where I talk about my knitting, my crocheting, and sometimes other yarn-related crafts, and maybe someday spinning. My wheel's over there somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, my name's Lindy, and it is March 24. It's been two and a half weeks since my first episode. Um, I've gotten a lot done since then. I've been pretty busy, especially that first week. I got a lot of stuff done real fast. And since then, I've been just slowly cranking away at the other stuff. So, start with my finish o finished objects. Um, first pair of vanilla socks that I did show on the last episode. On my these are just some vanilla socks made out of Patton's Croy sock. Um, the colors are flax for the, the cuff, heel, and toe. And then the rest of it's brown rose marl. But yeah, it's I've worn them a few times. They're not blocked because I've worn them and washed them already once. Um, but yeah, they're... I really like how these turned out. They're a bit taller than a lot of my other socks have been, so yeah, they've just been a great another pair of socks that I've made. The second pair, <laughs> second thing is another pair of socks. Um, the last episode, I unboxed my March Yarnables um, box, subscription box, and this was the yarn that was in it. It's called Celtic Fairy by Hypnotic Yarns. And yeah, the pattern I used here is called the Togetherness Socks by Little Home Designs. And it's a one by one cuff. And oh, I need some sock blockers. I've been meaning to get some for this, but just haven't done it yet might be able to see there's cables running down the length of the sock. Mm, will it focus? Probably not. But anyway, it's a three, a one by three cable. And it is... Maybe? No? Okay. It's a one by two cable that runs all the way down the length of the top of the sock, not on the bottom but yeah I love this yarn the plush sock base hypnotics plush sock yarn base is so soft I haven't actually worn these yet but like I've tried them on they're rather lovely it's just such a nice yarn um, the pattern was wonderful I loved this it knit up really fast I just loved it but I'm worried I'm not gonna like the toe. The toe is rather boxy because I followed the I followed the um, the pattern pretty darn close to exact because it was just one of those patterns I felt like doing that. But you bound off, use your Kitchener sit, stitch at like 32 stitches instead of the normal like. 16 as you can see like this is the normal it's 16 stitches so 8 and 8 it's what I normally do and this one let's double that I'm a little worried I'm not gonna like that but at the same time it's super soft and squishy I'm still gonna wear them I don't care they're gonna be wonderful in either way it's fine it's fine I do actually like because these are these fit really nice and I don't know if it's because it's kind of ribbed or I don't know but all I know is this specifically this heel fits so nice on my foot I guess I haven't worn them for more than five minutes so can't actually be certain that they're perfect but okay let's see my third finished object is actually not a ruler down. Oops. Okay. 
is actually this cardigan. It is a cropped, just big, chunky cardigan with a giant, tall collar that can be flipped down or you can shift it all up. But yeah, and it's a short sleeve. It is wonderful. I actually, okay, first off, the pattern is called, I'm going to butcher the name of this pattern, Nananamo, Nananamo Cardigan. It's by Tara Lynn Morrison. Um, I will have the actual spelling in it down in the description box and a link to the pattern. But I actually found this, um, I actually was watching, I think it was Fiber for the People, her, one of her, I think a fairly recent podcast of hers. She was wearing a very similar, not this exact cardigan, but it was one that was very similar by the same designer. And I actually loved it and then started searching through Ravelry and um, found this one instead and went, no, this is perfect for me. So yeah, um, the yarn is Big Twist Yarns Natural Blend, 80 Acrylic 20 Wool. It's in the color Sage. It's actually a yarn that um, I've had in my stash for a really long time and I've been meaning to just try to use it up. I actually have more of it, believe it or not. I got it on clearance, like I said, a long time ago. Um, yeah, I'm not actually... I'm, I'm trying to use up my acrylic yarns um, that I still have in my stash. Things I haven't gotten rid of, de-stashed. I'm just... I don't enjoy knitting with acrylic very much. I don't mind crocheting as much, but I just don't crochet as much, so... Yeah. Anyway. And yeah, I don't know if this is even a yarn that's available if you are interested because it's like I said gotten clearance a long time ago it's old old anyway okay now let's move on to that is the end of my finished objects and I've got four one two, yes I've got four unfinished <laughs> with works in progress right now I suppose let's start with the two that I showed you last time first one is my Hogwarts scarf. Ravenclaw, naturally. <laughs> Not naturally. I don't care what house you're in. I'm just a Ravenclaw. Anyway, so this is the Ravenclaw scarf. It's actually, that's what it's called. It's the Hogwarts scarf by Lauren Kent. And as of the last time, I think I was around here. Here, maybe here. I'm not certain, but I've gotten a couple rows done since um, the last episode, and um, yeah. I don't work on this one quite as often. It's kind of reserved for those nights where I can't handle reading a pattern <laughs> or keeping track of where I'm at. Just one of those nights where I need to have my hands busy, but my brain isn't really working. As you do. Um, I don't know if I said Patton's Classic Wool Worsted in the color Navy and then Brown Mustard. I love this. It's such a nice 100% cheap economic wool, I guess is what I'd call it. Because, yeah, it's pretty pretty cheap for what it is. Um, okay. The next thing is my Vernal Equinox shawl by Lenka Comero, once again, probably butchered that name. I apologize to anyone whose name I'm butchering. I'm just not good at, oh no, I am tangled up. Okay, got it. <laughs> I did not finish a row. Oh well, I'll still be able to show what I'm doing. Okay, so this is my Vernal Equinox shawl. It is, I'm using Knit Picks Gloss lace weight um in the color cranberry it's what is it made out of it is a 70 wool 30 silk but yeah it's coming along pretty well i've gotten 
I've moved on to the next lace section. I was in, I was about here last time. So I've gotten about this much done. This section I actually didn't, this is supposed to be about twice as long, but I was pretty darn close to done with my first ball of yarn and I didn't want to run out before I got to the very, to the fancy edge. So I went ahead and decided to half that because honestly, this is already going to be huge because I mean just, it's already going to be huge I'm certain. But anyway, it's just turning out really nice. I'm so excited. Anyway, okay. Okay, the next thing I actually started yesterday. So, a couple nights ago, I could not fall asleep for the life of me. So I fell down the rabbit hole on YouTube, like normal, as you do. <laughs> and, um... I started watching tutorials on how to knit brioche. I have never actually knit brioche. I've been interested, just never had, I guess, a fire under my butt about it. <laughs> so, I pulled out some just leftover yarn I've had in my stash for a long time and started this yesterday. Oh, it's, isn't it pretty? Um, this is just knit out of wool ease. Like I said, it's yarn I've had in my stash for a long time. It's, um, I could not tell you what colors they are. I think it's, might be gray heather and no idea about the purpley color, but the pattern is called Faux Braid Brioche Scarf by Mare Allison. And it's just turning out so lovely. I am just so happy with how this is turning out. I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I haven't tried brioche before now. I guess I've just never been super... So yeah, I've just never had anything that excited me until, you know, staying up late watching videos. Apparently that's how I work. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the Faux Braid Brioche Scarf. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I, I'm hoping I have enough to make a cowl, like for one of my kids, because, I mean, I could wear it as a cowl too, but a tight one, but... I don't know. Like I said, I'm I'm kind of trying to get away from using acrylic. I just don't enjoy working with it a lot. Blends like this I can handle, but um Oh, trying to knit with 100% acrylic is not my Oh, I've tried a few times recently. I end up ditching the project and frogging it. Don't like. It. <laughs> anyway. I feel like I had something else I was going to say. Oh, the needles I'm using. I Pretty much all of my projects, I use Knit Picks interchangeables. Something I don't think I've said before now. Um, I also just have some plain Knit Picks circulars, and I because the reason I use the Knit Picks is because I really love their nickel. So these are the nickel interchangeable. The brioche scarf is actually size seven, US seven. Um, on my Hogwarts scarf, I think it's a size 8. Yeah, I'm using a size 8. This is their wood, the Knit Picks wood needles, and um, size 6. I just dropped a few stitches, so I'll have to deal with that later. Okay, now, the big work in progress that I started. I'm so excited for this. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been, um, yeah. So, I got this book for Christmas this last year. It is Scandinavian Sweaters by, what is it, Kristen Wyola Odingard. It's just, the patterns in this book are stunning. I'm, I'm so happy I was gifted this. Um, 
So the pattern that I am doing is called the Wyola cardigan. I don't know if I'm actually pronouncing that correctly. I'm uncertain. I'm not. Pronunciation is not my bag of teeth, but okay. This is the cardigan that I am working on. If I can. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's. I can't tell if that's blurry or not, but up on the top, there's a really neat detail up on the top of her shoulder, on the shoulders, and then along the cuff and the bottom, the hem, there's a color, a two color stripe. Yeah, it's just such a lovely pattern. Anyway, so I started that a couple couple weekends ago. I finished this and immediately went to that and this literally took me two days because I started it and didn't stop. <laughs> As happens sometimes. Anyway, so this cardigan, the Wild cardigan, I am using Cloudborn Fibers Highland Sport weight. It is 100% fine Highland wool. And the colors, here, I'll show you what I'm using first. Ah, tangled mess happening. So these are the colors I'm using. This is heathered, heather oatmeal, moss, Caribbean, and dark teal. They're just so pretty. So, I've gotten quite a bit done. I'm so happy how it's turning out. Oh, yeah. It's a bottom up cardigan and worked in the round and then I'll have to steak it, which I've never done before. I am a little terrified, a little terrified of cutting into my knitting. I've never done it before. It'll be fine. I know it'll be fine. I know how to sew. I have a sewing machine. I sew a lot. I know it'll be fine. But it's still terrifying. Anyway, this is how it's going. I am so happy. So beautiful. And yeah, look at that stripe along the bottom. It's just, oh, it's turning out so good. It is turning out so beautifully. Oh, I just wish. Just like all projects. I'm so excited about it, and I want it to knit faster every time. Every time. I just want it to knit faster. I'm too excited. <sighs> yeah. This is going to be the biggest color work project I've ever done. I've done some smaller ones. I made my husband the Bernie mittens <laughs> um, for Valentine's Day, and then I have a sweater where I um, I knit the yoke, and color the yoke was color work, and so was down the sleeves to about above the elbow but yeah so I've I'm no stranger to color work just this is a huge color work project <laughs> yeah, so happy and the fabrics turning out really nice it's um this yarn it's not super wash but it's um it's not it's pretty soft like if you're sen super sensitive you, to wool you m might not want to but like I'm not like, I can wear wool over, like, polyester any day. Any day. But anyway. Oh, and I guess. I know some people like to see the packs. I have been watched enough, you know. I've watched enough podcasts, other people's podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I'm very proud of how well I'm doing with that. It almost looks looks super nice. I'm pretty impressed with myself with how that's turning out. If I do so say, say so myself. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all the finished objects and current work works in progress. Um, I've got a few crochet projects I might show at some point, but one's scrappy and one's just been kind of hanging out, snoozing for a while. If I pick up either one of them again, I'll show you guys, but we're not going to today. Anyway, so 
Next part of this episode is a haul. It's a sad haul, actually. The um, local yarn shop that I've been going to oh, for about 10 years now is going out of business. Is business. Um, I think their last day open is end of April. I think, it, I think that's what it is. But anyway, so I decided to spend the Christmas money cash that I got because I'm a very lucky person and my parents like to give me as an adult my parents have decided cash is the Christmas present so thank you mom and dad you bought me a bunch of yarn <laughs> there was a spoon I'm pretty certain that's my children's fault I do not know why there was a spoon okay whatever kids it, it's whatever Okay, I'm just going to start from the first thing. I'm just grab and show. Okay. This, the first one here. This is Melabrigo. <sighs> Once again, butchering names. Ario? Ar Ario? Ar <laughs> that can't be right. Anyway, this. It's the DK version of Rios. I know, so. Anyway, this is the color Petrichor. It's just so pretty. It's got like burgundy plum colors. And it's almost like apple green and rust colors. And oh, it's just... I really wish they would have had more. But unfortunately, especially like the Malabrigo brand stuff. Um, it was pre-picked through already. They're still open for another month. And they're... <laughs> Yeah, getting picked through. It's okay. I got a lot of good stuff still. Still sad they're gonna can't. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. The next thing here is I bought three balls of bamboo pop and black. Well, there we go. Yeah. It's super soft. This is a um. It's a light. It's like three. So I guess what's three? Is that DK? Yeah, that'd be a DK weight. Brain shut off. Couldn't remember what I was doing. <laughs> anyway. And I know what I'm going to do with this. There's a um, really pretty... It's like this boxy cropped tee. I don't, couldn't tell you the who it's by, but I have it saved on my Ravelry. I have it saved on Ravelry, and that's what this is going to be for. Nice lightweight summery top so excited that actually might be one of the next things I do uncertain anyway the next thing here we'll do this I got two skeins of Rios Malabrigo Nope, nothing wants to focus on. Anyway, so the colors are cucumber, and this is ocean, no, water green. These are the only two of the colors. But yeah, um, they're really close in color, but I still thought they'd be really pretty doing color work with them. Cause yeah, you can kind of see, you can see that they're, yeah, there we go. That shows a little better. They are, I think it'd be really pretty doing color work. And my eldest daughter really likes like aqua blues and teals, like the green blue colors. So I'm thinking this will end up being something for her. Uncertain what, but yeah. Okay. The next thing I have is I got four skeins. Oh my goodness. That's slipping out of my lap. The next thing I got was Cascade Yarn, their Heritage Sock. 
It is a 25 Superwash Merino wool and a 25 nylon. Or 75 Superwash Merino, 25 nylon. But yeah, it's Cascade Yarns Heritage. And I do not know what the color is because I looked for it. It just, the color number is 5660. It's just a really lovely soft blue. I don't know if I'd say it's baby blue. I'd say it's just a soft pastel-ish blue. Um, I didn't realize it till a little while ago, till after I got home. I think this one, it's got the older tag. I think it's a different dye lot. But I'm not... Yeah, it's definitely a different dye lot and it's a little off. But I think... If I do it right, I think it'll be fine. I might, we'll see what I do, but I think this is going to end up being a, um, a fairly snug, um, pullover sweater, like probably three quarter length sleeve and kind of cropped because I wear a lot of high waisted skirts. It's just my preferred, I like high waisted skirts and, um, I like three quarter length sleeve sweaters. So I think that's what this is going to be. Now the last thing I got was four skeins of Plymouth Select, it's Plymouth Yarn, Plymouth Select, say that five times fast, um, Chunky Merino Superwash, it's 100% Superwash Fine Merino Wool, it's a chunky wonderful super soft and squishy chunky super wash yarn i am so excited to use this um it's the color sand but yeah i have no idea what i'm doing with this yet it's not enough for anything too big i might end up doing a big chunky cowl because i don't really have a lot of cowls i've got i've made one ever it's a Marie, it's a mohair. It's a pretty mohair and beaded one that I made. Oh, nine years ago now. Because my baby was, my eldest baby was a baby baby. When, um, I made that. So, and I've got a few fabric ones that I've bought. Or been gifted. But none that I've known, none that I've made. Beyond that. Yeah, so I think this is going to be. So yeah, I think this will end up being a big chunky cowl. That'll be lovely for next winter, I think. That might be one of those quick projects I throw in this next fall or something. Or over the summer. We'll see. Anyway, so I think that's it for me today. Got, yeah, got a lot of things going on. Got a lot done. Hopefully I'll get a lot done before the next time I see everybody. See everybody. Sounds weird. All of this still seems so awkward. Talking into a camera at people I don't know. Rambling about my projects. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. And if you like what I've been doing, if you liked, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. That'd make me so happy. Awkward ex exit. Bye, everybody.